Do you know all there is to know about the new Equestrian Canada vaccination rule kicking in for the 2020 season? The new vaccination rule will be universally enforced for all equines entering EC sanctioned competitions beginning in 2020 with the aim of reducing the potential for disease to spread at EC sanctioned competitions. We are here to help explain the who, what, when and how of the new rule. All horses attending equestrian Canada sanctioned competitions must have been administered an equine influenza and equine herpes virus 1 and 4 vaccinations within six months before arrival of competition, but no horse shall have had a vaccine within seven days prior to arrival of the event. There is a 21 day grace period to that six month timeline. Horses not in compliance with this rule may be asked to leave the event site at the discretion of competition management. The frequency of vaccine administration should be as recommended by the vaccine manufacturer or your veterinarian. Ideally, the vaccine should be administered by or under the direction of your vet. Competition management may request supporting documentation confirming a horse's compliance with mandatory vaccination requirements. In the case of a horse that is unable to receive either of the vaccines, a letter must be provided with the entry form from a veterinarian on official letterhead stating the equine cannot be vaccinated due to medical concerns. At the discretion of competition management, a log of the horse's temperature prior to arrival at the event site or during the event can be requested. Equine influenza and equine herpes are both highly contagious viruses that affect the respiratory tract of horses. These viruses are endemic in the North American equine population and are primarily transmitted by secretions from infected and shedding horses. Infective droplets from coughing and snorting horses may be able to spread as far as 50 yards. It's important to also note that transmission can occur indirectly via contaminated clothing, stalls, equipment, and water buckets. Just for clarity, equine herpes virus is commonly called equine rhinopneumonitis, hence the frequently used term flu rhino shot. EHV exists in several strains, two of which cause respiratory signs, EHV1 and EHV4. The neurologic form of herpes happens when EHV1 undergoes a mutation that allows the virus to attack the nervous system rather than the lungs. Another form of EHV can cause abortion in pregnant mares. Since these viruses are carried in the population, outbreaks occur frequently. EHV is able to survive in a dormant state in the cells of healthy horses and then reactivate when the animal is under stress, such as when sick, traveling, showing, or in intense training. This causes them to shed infectious particles in their nasal secretions and explains why outbreaks can appear to come out of nowhere. Most mature horses are exposed to the herpes virus as foals through contact with their dams and pasture mates. Over time, and from repeat exposure, most horses will develop some degree of natural immunity to these viruses, so younger horses are more likely to show clinical signs of active infection. However, even mature horses can be affected and show typical respiratory signs. Sick horses typically have a fever and lethargy, with varying degrees of nasal discharge and coughing. Some horses can get enlarged lymph nodes or edema of the lower limbs. Both equine herpes virus and equine influenza can have a huge effect on our equine industry. Affected horses can be out of work for weeks. It typically takes 14 to 21 days for a horse to recover fully, even from a brief illness. Larger scale farms with outbreaks that result in farm quarantine can mean lost revenue for lesson and training facilities. Having horses out of work for weeks means they cannot show or train. If the outbreak is significant enough, it can result in the cancellation of competitions. Actually, any kind of a sick horse is not a good horse, a useful horse to anyone. Uh, if you can't compete, if it's getting other horses sick, if it's shutting your barn down, all these things are very, not good things to have happen. These viruses can make horses susceptible to other secondary infections due to immune system compromise, which causes greater risk of complications and avoidable veterinary costs. If we can ensure that all horses participating in EC sanctioned shows are up to date with these vaccinations, we can help decrease the risk of outbreaks as well as decrease the severity and duration of the illness for those that do become infected. 
Vaccination will reduce the duration and severity of illness caused by this virus. Most importantly, vaccination reduces the shedding of infectious virus particles in the nasal secretion of sick horses, thereby reducing transmission to the rest of the population. The first series of vaccinations is called a primary series, and it is critical that this is done correctly in order to create maximum immune response. In a primary series, the horse receives one vaccine and then a second dose three to four weeks later. From there, a horse must have a booster shot at least once a year to maintain minimum effectiveness. High-risk horses, those that are attending competitions, clinics, are in a barn with frequent horse movement. Boosters are recommended every six months. In order to comply with the new EC rule, a horse must have received a rhino flu vaccine within six months of a competition. Horses must also not have had the vaccine seven days before the competition. There are intramuscular and intranasal options for these vaccines. Horse show organizers will have the right to ask competitors for proof of vaccination before issuing a competition number. Proof can be in the form of a letter from your veterinarian or an invoice indicating what vaccine was given and when. Reach out to your veterinarian or equestrian Canada with any questions or concerns about this new rule. If you don't get your vaccinations, expect elimination. 